So what's up with the real estate market here in Seattle? Just a few months ago, you could do no wrong. The market was at a euphoric stage, but recently you might have noticed a slight shift. In today's video, I'm gonna discuss the factors at play in the Seattle market so that you can feel educated about the direction that our market is headed. And if you wanna know how and why the Seattle market is changing, then keep watching because we are gonna get after it right now. So if you've lived in the Seattle area over the last few years, all you can really say about the market is that it's been ultra hot. We were hitting all time high sales prices without breaking a sweat, and all of which have been bad news for buyers. We're talking bidding wars, buyers having to waive all contingencies, massive escalations on their offer prices. Well, the market is changing, and I really wanted to go over three things that will help you come to your own conclusions as to what the real estate market is doing here locally in Seattle. Okay, so let's jump into the first item, and that's going over the market data and discussing leading and lagging economic indicators. First, let's talk about leading indicators. So leading indicators look forward. As I say, they look forward through the windshield at the road ahead. So they point toward future events and are used in all industries. An example of leading indicators specifically in real estate are new home sales, housing starts, and building permits. So let me give you an example. If housing starts start to rise, it means that building Builders are optimistic about the demand in the near future for newly constructed homes. If housing starts to fall, then builders are getting cautious. That's a sign that home sales are starting to slow or that builders at least fear they soon will start to slow down. So lagging indicators, on the other hand, they look backwards. They look through the rear window at the road that has already been traveled. So lagging indicators look at what has happened in the past and it helps confirm a pattern. An example of a lagging indicator that's important in real real estate is inflation, right? You're hearing that word a lot these days. Inflation occurs when demand has increased due to economic growth and prices are rising to reflect the growing demand. So inflation lags economic growth. This is just a quick example, but understanding these types of indicators is important if you want to truly understand where the real estate market is headed and why. So periodically throughout this video, I'm going to be referencing a few charts. The charts that I reference are a culmination of monthly data that date back about three years years, but I take all this data and I track and chart it on a monthly basis. Now let me jump over to those charts and explain what you'll be looking at. Okay, so here's an example of the data charts that I was referring to. You'll notice that the graph line is considered a trend here, and you can see that by this blue line here. And when the trend is reading above the zero line, that means it's in an uptrend. And if it's below the zero line, the indicator is in a downtrend. Trend changes are signaled when the zero line is crossed in either direction, up or down. Regardless of whether the trend reading is above or below the zero line, the direction of the trend tells us if the trend is gaining momentum or if it's losing momentum. So as the zero line is approached in either direction, this type of market observation can help in anticipating possible market reversals. But what I really look for is when the trend changes by crossing the zero line in either direction. I'm gonna explain a little bit more as we go along but I just wanted to give you an understanding of how to read these charts so you can easily understand and determine what's going on at a quick glance. Okay, so now let's look at those leading and lagging indicators that I track on a monthly basis. Now, all of these indicators are tracking activity in King County, Washington, just FYI. The first leading economic indicator that I look at is existing home sales. In my opinion, this is the best leading indicator for price trends. Buyers create the demand for housing, which is directly linked with price movement of real estate. When the trend in existing home sales is increasing, more and more buyers are coming into the marketplace and this increasing demand causes real estate prices to rise. Conversely, when the trend in existing home sales is decreasing, less buyers are coming into the marketplace and decrease in demand causes real estate prices to stagnate or fall. One quick note, this is not to say that sellers aren't a factor in the supply and demand dynamics of the real estate game, but this is only saying that buyers play a more dominant role. So here we're looking at existing home sales and especially over the last few months, as you noticed here, um, right here is January, 2022, uh, existing home sales have been decreasing and headed toward that zero line. Now, when I look at the national headlines, existing home sales are definitely down significantly for market highs. Here in Western Washington, existing home sales tells a similar story, just 
not as drastic as you'd find on a national scale. This means that we are somewhat insulated from what, what's happening on a national level due to job growth here, overall wage growth in our area, etc. So for this indicator, existing home sales are still strong. The trend reading is still above that zero line. That means it's in an uptrend still. There is still a lot of demand here in Western Washington, but the numbers seem to be headed in the direction downward toward that zero line, which means that the trend is not yet reversed, but it looks like buyer activity is losing momentum. So this indicator will not be considered a trend reversal until this line, this blue line crosses the zero line. And that's when I start to listen. All right, so the second leading indicator that I look at is new home building permits. There are really two reasons for this. First off, real estate construction is the largest single industry in the US. And so the fate of the economy, whether on a local or national basis, often hinges on the strength of the housing sector. Secondly, new home builders are keenly aware of demand for housing. So when demand is strong and new home sales are increasing, builders react by pulling more and more building permits to build new homes to satisfy that demand. When the demand is weak, the new home sales are decreasing and builders will pull fewer and fewer permits because they just don't want to get stuck holding a lot of expensive housing inventory that is going to be really slow to sell. So typically the trend in building permits starts to drop off before the economy goes into a recession and the trend starts to rise before the economy starts to expand again. And then this relationship tends to hold true uh, for most major US cities. So basically what I'm saying is that the economy and the real estate market are closely linked to trends in building permit activity. And that's why it's important to track, especially locally. So now we're looking at the new home building permits graph uh, over the past couple of years. Similarly to the first indicator nationally, you're going to see building permits took a huge hit as of recent. And there are many reasons for this, a few of them being inflation, hurting material prices, obviously interest rate increases, etc. Here locally, building permits also have taken a hit. As you can notice, the downward trend started here um, sometime in June. So again, I'm looking for trends here. For new home building permits here in King County, they crossed this zero line, prompting what I would call a trend reversal in October of 2021, meaning that the trend changed from positive to negative. Now again, these are just indicators that I track. That doesn't mean that the sky is falling because an indicator changed directions, right? This happens all the time, but whenever an indicator moves across this zero line from the positive to a negative, it tells a story. And this data together helps us paint a picture as to where the market is headed. So again, building permits have moved from a positive trend to a negative trend here in October of 2021. One thing I thought I would mention is another indicator that I look at less frequently, but it ties well with building permits. Alongside the building permits, I also look at the National Association of Home Builders Confidence Index. It's based on a monthly survey of its members designed to take the pulse of the single family housing market. The final index number ranges from zero to 100, with 100 being the most optimistic outlook. So as of right now, when this video was recorded in June of 2022, we are sitting at a 69, and that is down from 84 in December of 2021. So there's no need to panic here, but it's just something to keep in mind. Now let's look at some of the lagging indicators. The first lagging indicator is mortgage loan defaults. So mortgage loan defaults occur when a homeowner does not make a mortgage payment for a specified period of time. Typically that's going to be a few months. Then the lender records a notice of default against the property. This is the first step in the foreclosure process. It means that eventually the property can be sold at a foreclosure sale if the borrower does not bring the mortgage current. Trends in mortgage loan defaults are closely linked with real estate trends for a few reasons. The first being the trend in loan default gives you a clear indication of the strength of the local economy. When mortgage loan defaults are decreasing, the economy is healthy. Employment is typically strong and most homeowners can afford their mortgage payments. When mortgage loan defaults are increasing, this indicates that the local economy is weakening, right? You have unemployment is probably rising and more and more people are having financial problems. And secondly, the trend in in mortgage loan defaults has direct implication to real estate prices. When loan defaults are increasing, real estate prices tend to decline. And when loan defaults are decreasing, real estate prices are likely to rise. All right, now that you have a background of foreclosure sales here in Washington, let's look at the number of notice of trustee sales here in King County. Now again, in Washington state, the notice of default is not recorded against the property. So we don't have that micro level of data to look at that other states have. Instead, I just track the notice of trustee sales numbers. And again, this is when the borrower has missed enough payments that the property has a date to sell so the trustee can get some of their investment back. So if you look at this graph, 
uh, this indicator crossed the zero line prompting a trend reversal in January of 2022. Now again, in this particular graph, the trend is different. It, when it goes above the zero line, that's actually a negative. So most foreclosure activity in given markets is a negative sign for real estate markets. And it looks like that indicator reversed its trend from positive to negative here in January 2022. This graph just shows that from this data point here in January, February, in March of 2021 um, all the way up to January of 2022 has been increasing and again went from a negative or excuse me went from a positive to a negative trend because more and more foreclosures or notice of trustee sales uh, has a depressing effect on real estate prices. Okay and the final lagging indicator that we look at is interest rates. So as many of you already know the higher that the rates climb the greater downward pressure on real estate prices and of course falling interest rates have an uplifting effect on real estate prices. So this has to do with affordability based on income and in lower interest rate environments, you have much more buying power with the income that you make. Local market forces do not determine interest rates. Instead, interest rates are driven by national or even global economic conditions. So even though trends in interest rates are useful in gauging the strength or weakness that may be developing in the marketplace, they can't really be judged alone. They need to be used in conjunction with other indicators, specifically the ones that I've discussed today. It's more important to look at the other local indicators first to find out what's going on specifically in Seattle. Interest rates can kind of be viewed as an accelerator or a break to the other three indicators that we covered earlier. All right, so now let's check out interest rates. As we all know, interest rates have been moving much higher with the Fed stating that they will not hesitate to move interest rates higher to fend off inflation. Now, in the case of this graph, interest rates that are above the zero line are considered unfriendly to real estate prices and the economy. Now you'll notice that this passed over the zero line prompting the trend reversal in August of 2021. So now we have a trend reversal from positive, which is going to be low interest rates to negative, which means that interest rates are increasing when it comes to uh, what's happening in the 30 year US Treasury bond market. So by putting all these data points and trends together, we can create a pretty good picture as to what is happening in the market right now. Since Buyer demand seems to be decreasing. The market seems to be headed toward prices leveling off some and slower appreciation overall. Double digit market returns is simply not sustainable. And I think most of us are beginning to realize that this is a more realistic way of looking at our market here in Seattle. Some of these earlier data points are pointing toward a potential slowdown, but let's be clear about what a slowdown means. I'm not saying that prices are gonna fall out of the sky. Maybe instead of the market returning 15 to 20%, appreciation may slow to like seven to 10%, maybe maybe less, but regardless, something more realistic. It's tough because we have become a little desensitized to market appreciation in general, right? We forget that the rate of appreciation that we've accounted over the last few years simply cannot happen forever, but it's gonna take some time to see if the data will continue a potential downward trend for home values or if it's gonna hold steady. Some of the data shows trend reversals from positive to negative, and that's when I start to pay attention, right? What I'm looking for next is where existing home sales data moves over the next few months. Once that dives below that zero line, if it even does, and if the other indicators are showing negative trends as well as they already are, I would be confident in saying that a slowdown is in progress. How much of a slowdown is very hard to say, but prices and appreciation leveling off in the near future would be completely normal based on the data that the market is giving us today. So that's a lot, right? But there you have it. That's my opinion on what's going on in today's market and how to interpret the data that the market is giving us on a monthly basis. So with that information, we are going to finish up with the third and final topic, and that is observations from a full-time real estate agent, what I'm seeing out there in the marketplace in real time. So let's start out with observations from the buyer side. What does all of this mean if you're a buyer in Seattle right now? Should you still be buying? Well, inventory of homes for sale is increasing, and houses that were listed on the higher end of what the market will bear are starting to sit on the market market for longer. This could be a great time to buy because you may have the opportunity to skip past the bidding wars on some properties. If you want to get into the market here in Seattle, now would be the time. This is a great opportunity to get into a home without 20 other buyers competing against you. So don't get me wrong, there's still going to be competition, especially on nice properties that are priced fairly, but sellers that are overly exuberant on their listing prices will be more open to a fair offer if it doesn't sell immediately. As for whether or not you should be buying now, it just depends 
depends. I think there are some very good questions you have to ask yourself as a buyer first. Are you looking to purchase a house to live in or as an investment or both? What is your time horizon with this investment or the house in general? Are you planning on holding it forever? Why is buying a house important to you specifically? As a real estate agent, I really want to understand why you are looking to buy and the reasons around that so I can give you the best advice. It's going to help me understand where you should look, what price points will work for you, and really help you navigate what I'm seeing in the local market. I think it's still a great time to buy in general, given that you are not trying to time the market and that you're looking to build equity over the long term. Now let's talk about some of my observations on the seller side. Should I sell now or should I wait? Well, there's one thing we do know right now. You are undoubtedly in the driver's seat as a seller. You can still command a high sales price. It's still a seller's market if you decide to sell now, which puts you in a very good position if you are exploring the idea of selling. Again, I cannot say what the coming months will hold, but the buyer activity is slowing down and heading toward that zero line. So if you are on the fence for whatever reason, let this be the sign that you need to get the property up for sale if it makes sense for you and your situation. More than ever, it's time to work with your agent on a good strategy going into the sale. What I mean here is be sure to price your property correctly and make sure your property shows well. Potentially do an assessment on the house with your agent and fix certain items that will draw in a potential buyer. The days of just getting 10 offers on a house that needs a ton of work is slowly fading. There are still tons of demand for nice houses in good areas, but neglecting your pricing and listing strategy is gonna hurt you as we move into a changing market. And just like all the buyers out there, there are also important questions to ask yourself as a seller. Why are you looking to sell? Where are you planning on living? Is it more important for you to capitalize on your investment now or continue living in this low interest rate environment that you've already locked in? Are you looking to upsize? Or are you looking to downsize or relocate? What is your age and how does selling fit into your goals for the next five, 10, even 20 years? By now, you probably realize that I believe your why for moving is more important than what's going on in the market. Understanding your unique situation is my number one goal as a real estate professional, so I can give you the best advice around. So I hope this was helpful information. I've given you some really good data points that you can track yourself moving forward, or you can work with a real estate agent or professional like myself to interpret the data for you. Whether you're a buyer, a seller, or both, it's important that your real estate professional answers your questions using data and experience, but never just one. I've had too many clients tell me that an agent that they were working with uh, told them that they just feel like the market is changing. And I'm here to remind you that a feeling is not data, it's an emotion. So there you have it. Hopefully another valuable video by me, Jordan Reeder, your Seattle area real estate agent. Leave a comment below about your experiences in today's real estate market. I'm leaving my contact information right here below me. Uh, so if you have any questions, I'm happy to help and would love to be your resource for all things real estate here in the Seattle area. So give me a call, shoot me a text or an email. And as always, I will see you on the next one.